Um, Shalom again, Rastafari, and we're in the 37th uh, sabbatical reading and feeding, um, and that is Debarim, this particular study book, study book right here, Debarim, the Hebrew book of Numbers, and we're in the 37th portion, which is called um, Shalak Lika. In the Hebrew and Bamarinya, it is called uh, Lak Tilkalacha. And if you consult with our sabbatical readings and feedings chart, it's on page um, six, right about right here. Let's get a little bit of light on this. Right, right here. This is the portion. Right, this is the sabbatical portion, reading and feeding. And from the, the Torah, Numbers chapter 13, all right? And then we have the prophetical, we have Joshua, and we have Hebrews chapter 3. Now, in the Hebrews chapter 3 portion, in the Hebrews chapter 3 portion, um, we touched on uh, verses 7 to the end of uh, the chapter, just now. So remember in your studies, the Torah portion is a foundation, is a foundation of, right? It's a foundation. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. Some things we want to show you and everything. Okay, three, chapter three. So we went from seven to, so we read the Birth Hadash, the New Covenant, the New Testament portion. Now, one verse we didn't read, and we want to touch on that. We want to address here why did the Beta Israel. Why did Israel lose the promised land? Or why did a generation of Israel lose the promised land? And we're tying into this the Ethiopian World Federation. You understand the Ethiopian World Federation? We're tying in Shashemeni. We're tying in the promised land, the King of Kings, Rastafari, in Revelation. Right? So this is going to tie in with the lost sheep today and tie in with I and I in this present time, in this present um, dispensation. Now, Hebrews chapter 4 and 1, it says, Let us therefore fear, in other words, let us be in reverence, let us be true rastafari, let us have a reverential trust, you understand, of Jah, as well as a hatred of what Jah regards to be Evil, and one of the main things that he regards to be evil, right? Because if you ask a lot of our brothers and sisters and others, say, "Oh, oh, oh what's evil?" And it's interesting to hear the litany of evil that people regard, and even we people think are evil. All right, but the thing that Jah calls evil in this particular Torah portion, this particular teaching, is he calls it an evil heart of unbelief an evil heart of unbelief. And it goes on to say an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living, from the living God, from the living God. Now we know that his word, you know, sent in spirit and in truth is life and is living. So they've departed from the word. But now in studying the Beta Israel in this portion and in studying us over the past 40 years, now we can better now connect the dots of why Israel, biblical, scriptural Israel, in the Old Testament, why they lost the promised land, as well as why a generation of them lost, and with us, a generation of black people in the diaspora of lost sheep also lost Shashemeni. So the connection is why Israel lost the promised land, more correctly, why a generation lost the promised land, and then we can see how over the past 40 years, another generation has lost Shashemeni or the promised land, right? The land grant have failed to repatriate, to come out of Babylon. Now notice this, that they had come out of Egypt, like many of us have come out of the 
Babylonian mind frame, becoming more conscious of Jah and Rastafari and the reality of the Bible concerning us. We know Jesus is black. We know Moses is black. We can see the Ethiopia connection. So we've come out of a, a deeper level of the Babylonian frame of mind. Those of us who say, I not Rastafari. You know, and the true Ethiopian Hebrew or the faithful Ethiopian people at home and abroad. So we're speaking to the two families of the Lord. I want you to understand the two families of the Lord. This is all scriptural. The two families of the Lord and the reality of the Ethiopians at home and the Ethiopians abroad in this time. Now, what's the connection, some would say, between Israel and the Bible and Ethiopia? Amos 9 and 7 it's not the only connection, but Amos 9 and 7 is, is very, it is very um, blatant, blunt, clear, overt, obvious. You know, like, bah, don't you get it? It's right there in your face. So let's go to Amos, let's go to Amos for a moment, 9 and 7. Amos 9 and 7 says, Are ye not as children of the Ethiopians unto or to me? O children of Israel, saith the Lord. Hath not I brought up Israel out of the land of Egypt, and the Philistines from Kaftor, and the Syrians from Kerr? Now, what's the connection between these peoples that the Lord is linking? First of all, they're all black peoples, and they're all peoples he delivered who were of the faith of Jah, in other words, of the true faith. We may say the orthodox faith in some sense, the Tawahedo faith, our ancient faith, our Judeo-Christian faith, but it's the true faith that's based on the word of Jah and the testimony of Joshua, of Yeshua, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, or in the Amharic, Jesus Christos. Right? So, that link, are you not as the children of Ethiopians to me, O children of Israel, is, 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 is the key. It's one of the keys. We can go to Psalm 68. You understand? Psalm 68 is, a, is, a, is another key. Princes shall come out of Egypt. Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hands to God. Then we can look at the scripture in a little more detail. Do you not recall when, when the Israelites... Um, had, had shown their faithlessness with the golden calf incident and other incidences there too. Job wanted to destroy them. Even in this series of Torah portion, readings and feedings, we'll see where Jah said to Moses, get out of my way. Let me destroy them, and I will make a nation out of you, O Moses. I'll make a nation out of you. So who was he saying? He's going to make a nation out of Moses is a Hebrew, right? And his wife, his children were Ethiopians, therefore they were Ethiopian Hebrews. And Moses said, no, no. And he pleaded the, the long suffering and the mercy of Yahweh. And Yahweh let it be. But it's very key that there's a couple of times in Torah where Josh says, let me destroy these faithless people. You understand? These people who have no faith. You understand? These reprobate, these, these criminals. Because they said that, yes, we will have faith in John, and then they went back to their, 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 um, their lost ways. Like today, ones go back to their Babylonian ways. They say, we can't repatriate, or we don't have enough money, or some people think, I don't have enough education. I got to go back and, and get an additional series of degrees and get in debt and everything else like that and deal with a lot of mix-up and chaos. Because the thing that you don't have is that you don't have the true faith. You know what I'm saying? You don't have the true faith. You, you, are, you are not preserving the birthright. And perhaps you, have, you can't preserve the birthright until you're born again. See, only when you're born again can you preserve the birthright. But right now you've been born wrong. You've been birthed it wrong. This is why it says you must be born again. You must be born again from above. So you must get this word in your heart and in your mind. Overstand. This is what unites you with the true and living God, and therefore it will open up your eyes of discernment so you can discern your true brothers and sisters and who to gather with, who meets the standard, who is coming with this Tim who who is bringing this doctrine. Let me show you something else in this word right here. And we're going to touch on Hebrews, Hebrews 1. You understand? Hebrews um, um, chapter 4, verse 1. Let's just go through it right here. It says, Let us therefore fear. 
Let us reverence. Let's have a reverential trust. That means that we we are we we're only afraid not to please him and live up to John's will in Yeshua, in Yeshua. It says, Let us therefore reverence least a promise being left us. A promise that has been left us. We have a sure promise, my people, in this very time. When we speak about the Federation, we're not speaking about so called, as people would think, just an organization. We're speaking about the covenant. We're speaking about our divine heritage. We're speaking about God's holy word being fulfilled in this very time. And we as Rastafari, we have even more of a responsibility, a charge, because we take on that name. So we must know who we're representing, whose namesake we are bearing. You understand? Whether true report, are we bearing a true report as those two, or are we bearing a false report as those ten? The ten witnesses or the ten, the ten spies and scouts who came back with an evil, an evil report. I want you to understand this. I want you to understand this very clearly. It's very important for you to over this. Because we're going to touch on numbers, the book of numbers. This is this particular Torah portion reading and feeding. So this is, this is the time for it. This is the time for this message and this word to go forward. So it says, let us therefore fear. In other words, let us, let us therefore be in divine reverence of Jah. You know, and yes, he's long suffering. He's been suffering I and I and I and I ancestors this long. Let us therefore fear at least a promise, a tesfa, a hope, an expectation. But then Isaiah chapter 20 said they shall be afraid and ashamed of Ethiopia, their expectation, like a lot of our careless Hebrew brothers and sisters. Your friend who also continue in the garviest way to belittle his majesty and to miss half of the story, the important half of the story, the operative half of the story. That's why they're in a state of inertia, too. You know what I'm And we see some crazy stories coming out about some so-called Hebrews. But remember, all Hebrews are not Israelites. I want you to understand that. Because Abraham, he had... Ishmael, we got the Ishmaelites. He had Isaac, and from Yishak come Yaakov, and come the twelve, or thirteen, if you please, but the twelve sons. And then we have Israel, but then he also had Keturah. Keturah, you understand? The Medeanites, right? And from Keturah, the Medeanite, or Keturah, the Ethiopian, he had six sons. And from one of them is Sheba or Saba, from whom come the Queen of Sheba. So the Queen of Sheba herself is a Hebrew too. But you see, they don't know what they just don't know. You understand? But you gotta know this, and you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be a witness to this. You have to know that it's true. So it says that a promise being left us of entering into his rest, of coming out of Babylon and entering into his rest. We call it today repatriation. We say, okay, it's repatriation. But, but what is it really according to his divine word? And what is the order? What is the order of it? You know what I'm saying? What is the order of it? You see, instead of trying to submit yourself to this bread drain or this group or bobo, this bingy, blah, 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 so whatever, submit yourself to John's word. You understand? Then you know who's who. You understand? You'll know whether you're in the house or still this promise being left us of entering his rest. Right? Any of you should seem to come short of it. You understand? In other, words, let us, in other words, let us be on point that we don't fall short of this, especially in a time like this. You understand? In this 2012, at this present state, you understand? And we're not just saying, well, just get up and just, just run. You know, first of all, find out, get the instructions. You see, what the Israelites failed to do was they failed to listen to Jah's and he Jah's word. And in his word, it was their provision, it was their promise, it was their protection. But instead they wanted to do it their way, their ways, and not doing it Jah's way. All right? So right here, this is very interesting right here because there's a promise that is left to us of entering. Now let's go a little further, verse 2. For to us, I and I and I, was the gospel, the good news, 
preached and proclaimed as well as to them. So this shows that even amongst all who say that they are Rastafari or Ethiopian World Federation or, or Israelites or whatever, it says that it was preached to, the, 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 the good news was preached to the faithful as well as the mixed multitude, the riffraff, spiritual riffraff. But the word preached did not profit them. You see, that's why some of them, you know, they throw the Bible behind them. They throw the study of the Amharic, the Word, the Torah, the Sabbath, the, you know, the Shabbat. They throw these things behind them. Why? The Bible tells us. But the Word preached, the Word that's being preached, cannot profit them. It cannot benefit them. Some of you all know that the, the profit and uh, 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 find out for yourselves the benefit in your heart, your soul, your mind, your body, your works of this word. But for some, you'd be telling them, yeah, such and such, and it, it, it doesn't seem to, to, to connect with them. Why? Because, see, those are those who the word that was preached, it doesn't profit them. Because why? Why doesn't it profit them? You know, they look just like us. They could be our own fleshy. How come it doesn't profit them? Well, it's very clear here. It says not being mixed. It's not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So they heard the word, but they didn't have any deposit of faith. They didn't have the Amen. They didn't have Christos. They didn't have Christ, Yeshua, at their center, at their core. They say, yes, Selassie is John, Father, God, right? But they can't approach to him because they're not going through Yeshua. No one can enter to the Father except through Yeshua, plain and simple. They're like these, these Christians or these folks you hear saying, there's many ways to God, blah, 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 so forth and so on. And they can't prove nothing. You understand? What has been proven over and over is that Yeshua HaMoshiach is the way, the truth, and the life, period, period. And what his imperial majesty now has vouchsafed is that he is the true one because he has given us his true word. That's why I went back to the word about um, is is, is Christ's name above God's name? Is Yeshua's name above God's name? According to the word, according to the scripture, he has raised his name above every name that can be named in heaven and on earth. So if God were to um, come amongst us as one of us, the, the fatherhood, the father were to visit all nations, what would he declare or who would he declare as his salvation? He would declare Yeshua HaMoshiach. And who has Kedamari Haile Selassie declared to I and I? Yeshua HaMoshiach. You know, and the evidence, we, we've been pointing to different, different evidence of this over and over. Now, this word, it could not profit them. They can't get a benefit from it. Why? Because they are faithless. We, we could say spiritually speaking, otherwise they're fake. But they're faithless. So they hear the word, they hear what we're talking about, they hear this message, but it doesn't connect with them. You understand? Because they don't have that magnet, they don't have that connector, they don't have that anchor, they don't have Yeshua. You understand? They don't have faith. Faith, it was not mixed with faith. For we, when we believe, or when we accept it as true, and we had trust in John's word, do enter into rest as he said, quote, as I have sworn in my wrath, or for, for, for the Yadi in my wrath, like he was rotted, he was rotted, he was red, wroth, wroth, rotted. As he, as he swore in his wrath, in his wrathfulness, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. In other words, it's already, it's already been done. Jah has already done his part. You understand? It's his long suffering that is waiting for those of us who will do our part. You understand? And fulfill that number. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise. And Ha Elohim did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they. If they, that condition, if they, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein. And there we have it even with Shashimani. We have the pioneer settlers. We have a few who have entered in to that rest, but the many 
who have been wandering in the wilderness for the past 40 years like the Israelites. And now we have before I and I a new generation. You understand? There's a new generation. We see the old generation, even those who entered in, who are passing on, who are transitioning. You understand? Who are returning to the spirit world. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Another, another check-in point. Uh, it's a check and it's a main point here. It's saying that there were others who heard when it was preached, but they didn't enter in. Isn't this interesting? Because this message of the land grant goes back more than, what, 40, 50, I think 50 or so, 50, almost 60 years, 50 to 60 years. You understand the land grant which is a foothold in the Shashimani, and, and the foothold in our promised land, Shashimani. Shashimani, in a sense, is almost like Jericho, like Jericho is in the time of Joshua and to the Israelites. All right? It, it, it is very much similar to that, if you understand. It says, Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached enter not in because of unbelief. Why didn't the Beta Israel enter in? Because of lack of belief. You understand? Lack. That first candle that was lit, it was blown out. It didn't go to faith. You understand? It didn't go to faith. They didn't grow up. You understand? They went backward. They went backward. They didn't go forward. You know, we say forward ever, backward never. But it's obvious, even by our present our present situation in the diaspora and the present situation of the promised land and the present situation of Ethiopia and Shashimani and even the present situation of the monarchy, you understand, that we went back or that the, there was a generation, the generation, this 40-year generation went backward and not forward, although some did enter in. Again, he limited a certain day. So, so Jah has set a time on these things. That's what we say from 1967, Dr. Gladstone Robinson, the Shashimani Land Grant Administrator, to 2007. That's 40 years, and 2007 is what? The Ethiopian millennia, which is the 7,500 years, 5,500 years from Adam to Yeshua to the Moshia, and then the 2,000 years. But then he said it was that 2,000 years. Remember what it says in the Bible that he will cut these days short for the elect's sake. So then we see the elect of God, Kedamawi, Hala Selassie, Moan, Bessazem, Negeta, Yehuda, cutting those days short, you understand, and fulfilling this promise to his people. But his people, being his people, like the Israelites were his people, have stumbled over that same stumbling stone, which is Christ, which is the Moshiach. You understand, which is Christ. And he limited, again, he limited a certain day, saying in David, saying in Dawit, today, Zare, Bintuna Bittasamu, after so long a time as it is said. So even after so long a time, so long a dispensation, even after this 40 years, today, it's still today, it's still today. People say, well, what, what, what happened to them when you wasn't even alive or whatever like that? You learned about it. Now you have that. It's written for your instruction upon whom this generation, upon whom the ends of the world have come. Just check out the news. Check out what's happening. You, you should know we're in the latter days. But then John also said in another place that in the latter days we would fully comprehend, we would understand these things. We would overs. You understand? And, and as these days get later and later, you understand, it becomes more frightening and shockingly amazing how accurate John's word is. Once, once, once our eyes are opened up, once the veil is taken off, and the veil is taken off in Moshiach, in Yehoshua, in Yeshua, in Jesus Christos, our black Lord and Savior. So today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. Don't harden your consciousness. To humble yourself. Don't harden yourself. Zare a bit, zare a bit to some move. Le bachahun attack at the bachahun men. Harden not your hearts. Attack a I think so. Well, I'm about to check. I'll check it out. 
You, you know, we got to keep our sword sharp. But verse 8 says, for if Iesus, now this is interesting in your Bible, it says Iesus and it has an I there. If you look at that eye, right, if you look at that eye and you trace that eye, right, that eye in the, in the Schofield um, reference Bible, it says Joshua. It says Joshua, but the translator translated Jesus because the name Yehoshua or Yeshua contracted. The name Jesus in Hebrew is the name Joshua. So, so even see that mystic, that metaphysical mystic, for if Joshua... Jesus, Yeshua, had given them rest, if he had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? In other words, if it was all over in the time of Yeshua, he would not have spoken of another day, another time. You understand? Of the Adis Zemin. So there remained, therefore, a rest to the people of Jah. For he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works. So if we really enter into his rest, into his Shabbat, we cease from our own works. So what we're seeing in this is the, is the micro. The micro is that, is that weekly Sabbath. Then you have the annual Sabbath, right? And, but then you also have the millennial Sabbath and the eternal Sabbath. Right, and the, on, on the spiritual and the actual level, the spiritual preceding that in, in the rebirth. For he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works. You understand? Because even the so called works that I and I are about, even in pre, it's not really I and I works, we are doing jaw works. These are jaw works. We're not doing I and I works. Because who's doing I and I works? We say, well, you all should be able to figure it out for yourself. But, but that won't be doing John works. Many even come that way. They say that, you know, they know. A lot of folks know, but they're not even preaching this, not for a plan. They don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. But they're grieving John. So whose feelings really matter? Think about it. You understand? As God did from his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into his rest. Let us labor. How do we labor? You understand? Know we labor the work. Je Jesus, Yeshua, he says that the work is to have faith. You understand? The work is to believe. This is the work. The work is to believe. And how do we do that? Through prayer, through study, through fellowship. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. Least any man fall after the example of unbelief. Least anyone, you understand, fall after the manner of not accepting John at his word, not accepting the king of kings at his word, declaring that the king of kings is God and king of kings is a Rastafari, and not accepting his word and not laboring to enter into his rest. In other words, study and show thyself approved to God as a workman that need not be ashamed. That's why some say, well, you know, the elders, they tried their best. Some of them did well. And did good, and, and when we're faithful, some that y'all call elders, we don't regard as elders. They need to be ashamed. You understand? But be that as it is, as it is even in the wilderness, there were different cliques. You understand? There was there was Korah. Remember the, the children of Korah? They try to do their own thing. You understand? They didn't want to follow the one who Jah has sent. And that's another thing right there: command and control. Command and control. You understand? John had already set the command and control. You understand? He sent Moses. And even though Aaron was an assistant and Miriam was there for him, they were all his older brother and sister. But you see what happened even with Miriam and Aaron. You understand? They got beside themselves. You understand? They reduplicated themselves. They did good works, but now they're figuring, well, is Moses the only prophet? So you see that John sends one, and this is why we did the, the brief video previously, where we said to you that Marcus Garvey is not the one, and, and Marcus Garvey has nothing whatsoever to do with the Ethiopian World Federation. You understand? Nor do, does the red, black, and green. That might offend some people, but you know what? I and I not care about their offense. We care about pleasing Jah. You understand? If they're offended, so be it. They repent, right? If you're offended, repent. You understand? Repent. Marcus Garvey, this one right here, has nothing to do with Ethiopian World Federation. 
and, and it kind of reminds me of, of, of this portion, this Torah portion. It's like John sent Moses, right? Say like Malachi, his angel, right? He sent, he sent his man, right? And then people decided to have their own man, like the sons of Korah. You know what happened to the sons of Korah, right? When they wanted to intrude in the priesthood. They wanted to say, yeah, they want to play like they're priests. And they were but ignorant of what pleased Jah. You know what happened to them, right? The ground opened up on them. You understand? And that's an example right here from the word. That's an example right here from the word that we're, that we're reading right here in verse 11. Hebrews 4.11. Let us, therefore, this is the 411. This is the information. Hebrews 4.11. Let us make I and I labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. Least any man fall after the same example of unbelief. What Marcus Garvey symbolizes in the, in the true movement of Rastafari is an example of unbelief. You know what I'm saying? Of unbelief. And John did not send him. You know what I'm saying? And stop mixing him up with his majesty. You know what I'm saying? Or the teaching philosophies of Garvey and opinions. We don't want no devil's philosophy. And a devil is a slanderer. Did not Garvey slander his majesty? So give us the teachings of his majesty for I and I now want, and we won't accept, you understand, and we won't probably tell you in the future we won't accept, but in faith we'll act on it. You understand? We'll act on the, on the fact that we're not going to accept your devil's philosophy. This is who his majesty sent. You understand? This is who his majesty sent. Dr. Malako Emanuel Bay. And so anyone who calls the name Rastafari, anyone who says, yeah, I'm dealing with the Federation, and then they'll, they'll put up Garvey's picture next to His Majesty's picture. What kind of nonsense? What kind of knuckleheads are these? Oh, you're offended now, right? Like I and I really care about your offense? Repent. You know what I'm saying? Repent while it's still today. While it's still today, while you still have opportunity. You understand? You know that this word is true. You know what I'm saying? You know that, it, that, that Garvey was a slanderer of his majesty. You know that his majesty sent Dr. Malako Emmanuel Bayan. Even in Shashimani, they named the street or a section after Marcus Garvey and nothing after Dr. Malako Emmanuel Bayan. See, this is, why, this is why the people are cursed. This is why there's a lack of profit and progress and moving forward. And no one want to be the rebuker. You understand? Just uh, peace and love, no judgment, right? John loved judgment. You understand? He loved judgment. This is not I and I judgment. This is his judgment. I and I not judge you. It's your word that's judging you. That's why some feel a little bit uncomfortable. You're supposed to feel uncomfortable. You understand? Because that I means you have a little bit of soul left. You have something precious. John is trying to reach you if you're feeling a little bit uncomfortable. You know, some are so hard, they're dead. You understand? They're going to they're gonna fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of John, the word of God, the word of Ha Elohim Baruch Hu is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's deep. They said, don't fear one who can, you know, destroy or kill the body, but he who can kill and destroy the body and soul and sheol and the duat and the tuat and the mentor. That's a, that's a warrior. But this word here, this word here is quick. The word of Jah is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and as a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Okay, here's, here's a little example for you. You ever read in some time the Bible and you read something and it makes you feel bad? It makes you feel like... <laughs> that, that word, you, you see how... That's just a, 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 a personal example. You understand? A personal example of the word, you understand? But those who were lost, they lost this, this inheritance, this divine, this divine heritage. This is what the divine heritage that's spoken of in the Constitution and bylaws is all about. You understand? Get first matters first. 
instead of jostling for the highest position. Oh, international president, I'm running this and my clique. Yo, this is, time is running out. You better repent. Time is running out. Verse 13, that's that number. Love that number. Verse 13, neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. Just see and know. But you know, like the Psalms, in the Psalms, you ever read the Psalm where it says, and they ask, like, who sees us? You know, they ask who sees us. You know, neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked and open to the eyes of him with whom we have to do. With whom we have to do. And let's finish off with these three verses right here where we speak about the mitmanon. In King James says the believer, but the mitmanon, one who has our main true and, and, and faithful and living faithful witness, has confidence and trust. One who trusts Jah is a mitmanon, that the mitmanon is kept in perfect rest. It's kept in perfect rest, in the perfect Shabbat, by mercy and grace through, through the Bain Ha Elohim, through Walda Egezi Avihir, through the Son of Jah, the Son of God, Yeshua HaMoshiach. Seeing then that we, I and I, have a great high priest. You see, the, the great high priest, this is I and I, God and Father, the King of Kings, Abba Kedus. Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christos, he is I and I high priest. Get it right if you want to talk about the order of Melchizedek, so forth and so on. Get it right. Yeshua, Jesus, is the high priest. You understand? He is that great high priest that is passed into the heavens, into the, into the Samayat, the Shemayim. The heavens. That's why men and people down here, they're so worried about what's happening in outer space. You're thinking, they say, oh, a comet or asteroid. But there's nothing out there. They said the, the only thing that's out there is like 1,000, maybe 500 years away, 200 years away. You know, it's not anything near. So why are they so busy in space? They, they'll spend billions of dollars on observatories because they're trying to observe when our extraterrestrial high priest, Yeshua HaMoshiach, and our heavenly brothers from other planets are coming forward to done this reptilian satanistic system, you know, that is passed into the heavens. Yesus Yeshua, Bain Ha Elohim, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our profession. This is I and I profession. What do you profess? is true. What do you admit? What do you have faith in? What do you have confidence and trust in? You understand? Is it the living God or is it this dead God? You understand? This dead God. Because we are trusting the living God, then this right here, we would use this. You understand? We would use this and not be used by it. You, you, you know, it's whose mark do you have? Whose seal do you have? You understand? Which one moves you? Which papers are you about? You're about these papers or you're about the Holy, the holy Script? Which, which papers you, you're about getting? For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. So even though he is in the heavens, he had other sheep to call. He said he had other sheep to call. You understand? So, so are there other beings? Out? Of course there are. You understand? But that's not our and I problem. You understand? That's not our and I concern about people or beings on other planets. We got situation to rectify and to square down here on planet Earth. The heavens of heavens belong to Jah, but the earth he has given to the sons of men. It's only those reptilians, those men and people under the agency of Satan that are all kind of wrapped up in all anxieties. You understand? Know and why the anxieties? What are they really looking for? They won't tell you they're really looking for, you understand, know judgment. They're really looking for judgment. They're looking for judgment to come from the heavens. But we don't have a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. So even, even our personal, you understand, know situations, Yeshua is beyond just your regular old priest or pastor or preacher or something like that. You understand? So even though he ascended into the heavens, you understand, we still have the Holy Spirit 
right down here on earth. The comforter. Overstand that. Receive that. Stay in the upper room. Pray for that to, to, to come down upon you as the apostles did. You understand? For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points, all points bulletin, was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without khatiyat, yet without that, you know, the original sin, the disobedience, the ignorance of Adamana uh, Hewan, or Adam Weh Hewan, in Mahiyah, that khatiyat, that missing of the mark. You understand? That ignorance. They ignored what was said. And that's what caused them to disobey. So the original sin is ignorance. You understand? Is ignorance. Let us therefore come boldly. You see? Let it, now we can come boldly. You understand? To the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Aren't we in time of need right now? All of us, all divided and then like the body of Osiris, you know what I'm saying? Like the body of Christ in a sense, all divided here, there, and everywhere. You know what I'm saying? We can come to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace and find grace to help in time of need. Hallelujah and amen. On the point of throne, it's kind of interesting. This is the next vid is out there. You know, the Masons, a lot of the Masons, this is kind of like just a funny kind of thing. In a sense, the Masons out there, they be talking in their, some of their, their liturgy or whatever that they be reading and stuff when they go through their rituals about how they will appear before the great white throne. And if you look in Revelation, the great white thr throne is the throne of judgment. You know, it's a throne of judgment. And that we who are mitmenon, we who are sons and daughters of the King of Kings in and through his Christ, Yeshua, Bain Ha Elohim, the son of Jah, we can go to the throne of mercy. But they can't go to the throne of mercy, but even it, it's a little trick that they did. They, they wrote it in, and a lot of these people are so ignorant, even though they claim to be Christians. You know, a lot of the people, a lot of people with masonry, whites and others, they don't even know how bad it is and everything. But it's interesting how if you were to read, they would talk about the, the great white throne. But my point is there are many kinds of thrones even used in the Bible. But they think that because there's throne. And because John sits on that throne, you understand, that it is the throne of mercy. But they don't have the right to go to the throne of mercy. But we have the right to go to the throne of mercy. But even, it, it's like how the devil's a deceiver. The devil deceives the Masons in their ritual. You understand, many of them feel, oh, it's a, it's, it's a Christian, you know, I'm a Christian. I'm not going against Christ because of this. And then they, then they utter this thing where they say that they were going to appear before the great white throne. I'm going to go into that a little bit more, but I just saw that word throne there, and I thought I would remind you that there are different kinds of thrones, scripturally speaking. You understand? And how the devil, he deceived these people, these Freemasons, Illuminati, rest of the, these occult people who are like antichrist against trying to stop the rise of the black messiah. And um, it tells them, like, they're going to go and, like, get a reward and everything, you know, in the by and by when they appear before the great white throne. But the great white throne, in Revelation, is a throne for all those who are condemned. And none of the righteous will ever have to appear before the great white throne. But before the throne of grace, we can go boldly. So just make that little distinction in, in your notes that thrones, different kinds of thrones, there's a throne of grace, you understand, which is a throne of mercy. It's like the Kabbalistic tree. When you look at the Kabbalah tree, there is two sides of the tree. There's one side, which is a side of severity, and there's the other side, which is a side of mercy. You understand that we, in and through the new covenant of Yeshua HaMoshiach, we are now on the side of mercy. But those who still remain 
um, rebellious or, or unbelievers or make-believers or liars or worldly seclorum types and everything, they now are before the, 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 on the side of, they, they, they receive Jah's severity. In other words, and that's just a little another kind of link when you look at the Kabbalistic tree, it has those two sides. What, what Paul in the Bible calls goodness, you understand, like behold the goodness and the severity of Jah. He was basically pointing out that, you know, from that Kabbalistic Judaic knowledge that even Hawadi Apollos, Paul in the Bible, had, that that was even correct when properly interpreted in and through Yeshua, you understand, HaMoshia. So he kind of explained a little bit of. Christ Kabbalah, or the Kabbalah of Yeshua, that there is the severity of God, as we see in Old Testament times, and we have the mercy or the grace of God that we find in these New Testament times. But we're coming into a time of judgment and a time of great tribulation where we're going to see both the severity of God and the, and the goodness of God being poured out on those who are worthy for, 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 for what they're worthy. You know, it's like it's like the the um what do they call that again? The the Aquarius. Aquarius is a time of pouring out. Pouring out, right? But then if you read in the Bible there's two types of pouring out. There's a pouring out of wrath, right? There's a pouring out of wrath that is upon the wicked, but then there's a pouring out, you understand, of his spirit, as in the book of Joel, upon his sons and daughters in these last days and time and they will prophesy and they will and they will preach and they will move in the spirit and see these visions as well see the vision of Jah Rastafari so shalom again stay tuned got some more to come y'all willing we're going to pause for the cause love you brothers and sisters because you love to study I and I father's love letters Jah's love letters to I and I this word in Christ spirit and truth. Shalom Rastafari.